What's the first thing you notice that's different between these people, other than height, gender and fashion sense? Well, there's another characteristic that we can all see but may feel less comfortable addressing. Skin colour. My name is Elliot Joyner and this presentation will be all about the thing that causes these differences, a compound called melanin. Melanin is a biological compound mainly known for its role in skin colour. It's a polymer made up from long chains of modified amino acids and usually packed into tiny granules by melanocyte cells. However, its structure and purpose can vary, so melanin is usually broken down into three different types. Eumelanin, theomelanin and neuromelanin. The most abundant type of melanin in the body is eumelanin. Its quantity determines skin colour and hair colour in humans. For example, this person has dark skin and dark hair due to a large quantity of eumelanin in her body. However, this person has a much fairer complexion due to a lack of eumelanin in her body. The second type of theomelanins, which impart a pink to red hue, they are found to be concentrated in the lips, the nipples, and a third area which won't be specified in this video. The third type, neuromelanin, is found in the brain, located in a region known as the substantia nigra, literally translated as dark matter. Its biological function there is relatively unknown, but there have been suggestions that the loss of neuromelanin is linked to Parkinson's disease. So, that's an introduction as to what melanin is. Why is it important? And what does it actually do? When exposed to sunlight, like on the beautiful day depicted in the video, our bodies increase the production of melanin. The pigment is an effective absorbent of light and can dissipate over 99.9% .9 of absorbed UV radiation. This property helps to protect the hypodermis, the layer under the skin, from harmful UVB radiation so that DNA is not mutated. So how have different people from across the globe developed varying skin colour? The development of melanin in the skin began over a million years ago when archaic humans evolved to lose body hair and required a new form of protection from the sun. Humans that remained in hotter areas of the globe maintained their dark skin, such as Jean's ancestors from Africa and Nithya's ancestors from India. Others, whose ancestors migrated to colder climates such as Europe, were under less selective pressure to have large amounts of melanin in their skin, hence Jess and Lynn's lighter skin colour. It is important to note that most humans have a similar amount of melanocyte cells in their body, regardless of skin colour. It is the activity of the cells which results in the differences. Next up, the chemistry. Synthesis of melanin occurs in melanocyte cells where the amino acid L-tyrosine undergoes a series of oxidations and modifications facilitated by the enzyme tyrosinase. During this stage, two separate processes can take place. In the presence of cysteine or other thiol derivatives, a series of reactions will occur that result in the formation of pheomelanin. In the absence of these thiols, the modified tyrosine will be further oxidised to produce two monomers, DHICA and DHI. These are then polymerized to form eumelanin. Melanin granules are then inserted into specialized cellular vesicles called melanosomes and transferred into the keratinized cells of the human epidermis. Once there, the melanosomes accumulate atop the cell nucleus, where they protect the nuclear DNA from mutations caused by ionising radiation of the sun's ultraviolet rays. So, how does melanin structure help it to carry out its function? Tyrosine is an aromatic amino acid, so the resulting polymer is particularly rich in carbon rings. This creates a structure that's very good at absorbing a range of light of wavelengths, from visible to ultraviolet, explaining its dark colour and UV protective properties. Sadly, that's all we have time for. Well, there's so much more I could talk about, like melanin's relation to albinism and other things like squidding. So I guess I'll just say thank you for watching, and next time you're in the sunshine, remember to put some sun cream on.
then let the meninocyte cells do all the work. <laughs>